Hello and welcome to our program. Let's begin with a thought for today. मैं अपनी असफलता का मालिक स्वयं हूं यदि मैं कभी असफल नहीं होता तो कैसे सीखता सी वी रमन प्लीज ज्वाइन मीन वेलकमिंग ऑन आर शो टूडे आर गेस्ट फॉर टूडे ही इज द सी एम डी ऑफ हिंदुस्तान एरोनोटिक्स लिमिटेड Subhanallah Raju so welcome to the program thank you guru ji your journey sir with uh, HAL or Hindustan Aeronautics Limited or HAL it's uh, more commonly known started very early you were a management trainee with this organization and today you lead this organization how has this journey been for you sir it's it's a real fantastic journey of more than 3 decades i joined uh, as the 15th batch management trainee in 1980 and i was on the shop floor on 12 12 1981 after doing our uh, iit chennai course from there i moved on from an overall uh, factory to manufacturing and then to design mm-hmm. and finally landed up as a cmd of this hindustan great organization right so when you were 21 22 years old Did you ever think or did you ever have a dream or a vision for the organization and you said maybe one day I'll be in a position to make that come true? Yes, we used to dream while uh, as a student and we have a highest aspirations on board. Like those are the days where whenever we go for a, an interview and we are so sure that I'm going to get this job. I mean mm-hmm. that, that's the kind of an attitude we had and uh, the passion for kind of uh, aeronautical thing which led me to get into this uh, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and the journey was really good i mean i couldn't have dreamt that i would be cmd but then definitely uh, i could see myself in those days at least to reach the director right. thank god that i could lead the organization wonderful and i think it's also very enriching for an organization to see that somebody who started with it is leading it because nobody would know the organization better than somebody who's been with the organization literally from the shop floor to the highest office and i think that is what empowers any organization today sir when hal stands in the committee of uh, organizations it is uh, actually one of the highest and best performers what has made this organization so different aerospace uh, industry is uh, unique in itself and uh, this is the highest order of the technology which should be there and uh, there's no chance for a failure to be there in this uh, aero products a flying platform can never accept any failure or a lower quality so it requires the highest level of skills and a deeper knowledge of the systems because uh, the aircraft which fly in the air uh, need such an assurance for the people who are flying the pilots on to it and hcl as such looking at it in 1940 it truly started as a private public partnership this is by shri walchand hirachan and then the state of mysore who initiated this and slowly hcl moved on uh, grown in size and the turnover and uh, a 20 lakh input in the beginning now we are touching close to 20000 crores wonderful and uh, hcl has manufactured 4000 flying platforms which are now being used in the security of this nation right all this defense uh, aeroplanes or it is a, a trainer aircraft or a fighter aeroplane hcl has 17 designs of its own and we also got benefit from uh, 14 transfer of technologies okay so the spin offs of this transfer of technology were well assimilated in hcl and today the hcl is in a position where uh, it could manufacture it is manufacturing the helicopters one among the six nations in the world and uh, we design them we manufacture them and we support them 
with the Wonderful. unique requirements of this country. And I think uh, this organization also has given all of us many moments of national pride because when we look at uh, how we perform, we are competing with the best in the world. And as you said, once the aircraft is there or once the technology is up in the air, then there is no room for a mistake. Yes. So make all the mistakes you want while you're developing it. But once you're up there, you can't. I think this level of perfection to build it into each and every employee, how easy is that organizationally? Time taking and we need to impart these skill sets. The skill sets can't come overnight. So we gradually train them on a year on year and over a technician need to be very skillful needs about a minimum uh, 10 years of experience on the previous stages. Okay. So he becomes a real uh, highly skilled technician on the final products we should be doing. And we have a internal process of uh, training them uh, and uh, teaching them and bringing um, them up to the quality standards which are required by this industry. Okay. So you're known to say that technology cannot be bought, it can only be developed. I, I'm a strong believer of this. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing from many years and uh, seeing a lot of technology transfers and when anybody invents something and unless uh, it is not easily given to others, it is an opportunity for him to make business. But the needs and the technology which needs to be developed by us because it depends on what we require. True. Like if you're looking at uh, the light combat helicopter, which HL has designed, it flies at 20,000 feet altitude and delivers the weapon. This requirement is unique to India. Other uh, helicopters or the combat helicopters in the world need not go up to 20,000. They are good enough at 14,000 to 16,000 feet altitude. Okay. But this kind of a creation is we only can build it. That means the technology has to be built in-house rather than um, buying it from outside. Right. So for any development to actually fructify into something which can be put to use in the real world, I think the it's like the iceberg. So the tip of the iceberg is visible to the world, but nine-tenths is actually below. So the investment in research and development, in training, I think a lot needs to go. And the gestation period is very long for such yes. uh, investments. So how does actually HCL, HAL manage to ensure that this gestation period actually fructifies? Because very often, even people who are supporting it in a project need a lot of patience. Aviation and uh, the aircraft design, I mean, normal standards of it could be 15 years and plus. But if you develop a product on your own, and the next deliverable of a derivative of this product would be much easier. Okay. Again, I would take you back to HL's experience on uh, advanced light helicopter, which we took 15 years. Okay. The product after design, uh, the product is matured and is good for operation after f took 15 years. Okay. Now we moved on to another combat helicopter, which is more of a derivative from this uh, system, and that we could do it in nine years. Okay. And today we are attempting to develop a light utility helicopter in six years. Okay. And uh, we did have a record on uh, trainer aircraft, which we are developing in this Santa about trainer, HTT-40. Uh, we could do it in four years. Right. So the experience which we gain, I mean, one, once you have initially, we had the transfer of technology and the spin-offs of from the transfer of technology, the learning, and we implement on our own designs and that's how uh, we could reduce the cycle times. But of course, it's, it's a, a long drawn design and you need to have patience to see the maturity of the product. Right. So do you think we as a country, other than isolated pockets of excellence, are investing enough in research and development? In my opinion, I think we can invest more on our research and development. HL, we spend about six to seven percent of our turnover towards development of uh, products. Okay. And whereas a similar company in Sweden mm, claims to be spending about 20 to 25 percent of their turnover. So we still can do better in the R&D of uh, the products. Right. So India also celebrates, uh, I think we've dedicated a day, 28th of February as National Science Day. 
and uh, of course many universities are now trying to encourage young people to come in for uh, research and development because this is this is basically funded you need deep pockets for that so any initiatives at uh, HAL where R&D is also funded and young talent can come up we are doing this uh, by establishing chairs in uh, academic institutions okay. the premier institutes like uh, the IITs at uh, Chennai Kharagpur Kanpur we established a chair and then encourage the students there to participate and then do a research on the aviation and any specific issues which we transfer them as a problem definition and they find solutions and then we take them. In addition, we do fund uh, some students in uh, Mumbai IIT for doing their uh, research and also encourage HL officers to do a, a research in the institutes. I mean, they have to select get selected by themselves and then we allow them to go and do a, a research in the institutes uh, economically. So today with the rate of change, with the pace at which technology is changing, the rate of change has become so fast that sometimes what you are uh, looking into or investing R&D into and by the time it fructifies, the reality or the world or how it is going to be used can change. How does HAL manage that challenge? Technology is uh, really changing day on day, but uh, when we manufacture or design an uh, aircraft or a helicopter, uh, these platforms have a life of minimum 30 years. Okay. Physically, the structures won't change, but then they give us an opportunity for the uh, obsolescence of the electronics which have been fitted onto it like uh, the cockpit displays or the navigation equipment or uh, communication equipment which are based on the electronics would go or uh, get changed or upgraded because of the technology and HL has uh, really learned the art of uh, upgrading these uh, platforms. We do midlife upgrades and we have to our credit uh, the Jaguar aircraft uh, there in two, there in three upgrades. We do a Mirage midlife upgrade and uh, as an industry we look for the latest technologies and then incorporate on them to give more functionality and rather make it more lethal. Okay. How easy is it sir to actually upgrade or work on something which technology has been transferred to you and has not originated with the organization? Because you are actually working on something which has come from outside and then you're upgrading that and working on that. Uh, as I said that, uh, Maji, this the learning of HL or the engineers and the scientists which are there with us have learned the aviation technologies so well that today HL is capable of uh, fusing any sensors on a given platform and uh, uh, synchronize the weapons on these platforms. We learnt it hard way mm -hmm. and uh, the experience which is given to us. Uh, today we are confident of doing this kind of a work on a given platform even though it is not designed by HAL. I, and I think that is the brilliance of evolution. Even Charles Darwin said that it is about adaptability. Yes. And how quickly can you be mobile enough to adapt and then grow from there. Yes. You know, right. Instead of reinventing the wheel every time. Precisely what you said is right. Right. So what has been one of the most challenging projects that HL has handled in recent times? Every project uh, would come with its uh, real challenges for us. Right. And uh, really the Tejas which we are making it now uh, has took quite some time from a designer to a production stage. So uh, it was a real challenge for us to make a series production Tejas aircraft to the drawing specifications which are made uh, by the design authorities. Okay. Today we are proud that this aircraft has been uh, uh, given to the customer that is our uh, Indian Air Force. We are happy to see the squadron is formed and they are really flying this aircraft and the quality at which it is produced we are proud of it. Absolutely and it is very proudly displayed at the Republic Day Parade and I think that is uh, a moment of great national pride for all of us. Yes, much. this is if you see on a Republic Day parades, the single engine fighters uh, stopped flying 27 years back. Okay. Uh, somewhere in 1997 due to some accident or something, the single engine uh, fighters were never flown. 
But last uh, Republic Day was the first time where a single engine fighter that's after 27 years, yes. Tejas, the India's own design, the four and a half generation aircraft has flown. I know. And uh, to bring you live images from there when, when uh, everybody was so proud, all eyes in the sky, it was actually a pulse racing moment for many Indians at that okay. time. Right. How we see organizational growth and organizational development. Today with a lot of young people coming into the workforce and we're wanting to reap a demographic dividend. And I think somewhere the desire to create many jobs, jobs across, irrespective of the quality of output of young people from institutes, we're struggling over there in terms of people having the qualifications but not having employability. And I think HAL requires the finest talent and I think uh, actually talent which can grow along with the times, nothing ready-made organic talent also. How do you ensure that you get the best people? We have a procedure uh, incorporated into our selection process. Like I was a management trainee, which was uh, the then management in 1970s thought that uh, the kind of a management scheme which is devised at that time, mm -hmm. hoping that these specially trained young engineers would sometime would lead uh, HL uh, th that was the concept they have used and we still continue that every year we know that being a largest aviation industry and with the kind of uh, uh, industrial uh, development in the private sector to come into the defense so we do lose many people but then no. to keep a continuity on it we still continue every year uh, a recruitment uh, on the process which we have designed and we train them for about, I was trained for 72 weeks at the, from Madras IIT and then we have a Hindustan, uh, our own management academy mm -hmm. and uh, we train them and then keep them. Training them is good, keeping them is always a challenge. Is attrition a problem because the world is really competitive? Yes, uh, but then as I said that uh, Romaji, this we, we are the lead organization and then of course I mean, so there's we a certain need, we pride associated with working with <laughs> working Absolutely. And then we need to continue them we keep the people out of it and we know mm -hmm. how to train them and continuing on this uh, issue of uh, trained manpower or the skilled manpower which is required in India because uh, the aviation or the civil sector is also increasing uh, we have uh, formed uh, a section 8 company okay. which is uh, aviation uh, aeronautical skill sector council where the CMD of uh, HCL is the chairperson for that uh, institute with an objective of training 4 lakh people in the next 5 years. Okay, wonderful. It's, it's under the National Skill Development uh, Scheme. Right. Talking of national schemes, uh, make in India and indigenization. So to, where do you see, what is your vision for this scheme and how do you see indigenization panning out? Make in India, I mean, I would uh, say that HL has been doing this from rather 1960s. Absolutely. Right. And uh, indigenization, when we are looking at is the platforms which are being created uh, by HL, uh, we create a product which is used and required by our own services. Uh, it's growing up and I'm sure uh, right from trainers mm -hmm. to fighters to helicopters, we are in there everywhere. So on the uh, the defense equipment, on the fighters, the trainers, the helicopters, I think we are well ahead and in the plan of indigenization and uh, we are there to create the products which would be required by our customers. Right. Whenever we think of the defense sector, so we think of this very big secret organization working in secrecy where knowledge remains with a few limited. But now with the world becoming flatter and knowledge sharing becoming the norm also, how are we positioned and how do you ensure in HL and across other uh, similar organizations across the world that knowledge sharing happens? It's uh, an issue which was uh, bothering us in the past. Uh, the skill used to go away with the people. But then we now with the new technologies which are coming onto it and the 
the designs and with the software and the digital systems, we could capture the experience of uh, the experts and uh, put them as a knowledge center. And the youngsters who come in at a later stage could have a uh, reach to this knowledge banks and then uh, develop from there. So it's become more person independent. Even the, the digital systems which allow us to walk through after a design, it is much more uh, systematic rather than an individual having his own knowledge and carrying it away. Right. So when we become a person independent, sir, and uh, technology is uh, going forward by leaps and bounds, AI is coming in, artificial intelligence is coming in, uh, there is also this fear that there will be no jobs left for human beings unless it has creativity. How do you see, do you see the human intelligence being replaced by artificial intelligence? No, I, uh, while AI is coming up, I don't think completely it would replace uh, the human requirement. Uh, while we talk about this uh, fighter planes being flown by pilots. Now, later we were talking about in the future could be unmanned combat aerial vehicles. Mm -hmm. But then the situational awareness of the war field, there has to be a human being who is a pilot into it. So, while yes, things would improve, technology would give us an advantage of designing more comprehensive systems, I don't think it would replace uh, the human being. So what are some areas where young people should develop their skills so that creativity still uh, can seed itself in young minds and young brains? Because we're getting into such a world where we're constantly dominated by technology and the cut, copy, paste system of just reaching out and there's such a plethora of knowledge available and wisdom somewhere seems to be lacking. And wisdom has how do you creatively interpret knowledge and, and information? So what can young people do to actually bridge this gap? Innovation is, is the need of the day, right? Uh, and more, who else can the youngsters who could uh, do it better? Right. The, the current uh, environment in our country is also very positive and we have uh, lots of support for the startups. And whoever is going to innovate and create a product, I mean, he has been uh, encouraged and supported by the system in this country. And uh, the more of the technology which gives you to better adopt and create things which are required uh, by the system or by the individuals, uh, it, it's, it's uh, growing ahead. And I'm sure that uh, in our industry, of course, if you're looking at it, every part of it would I would call it as an innovation like uh, the kind of systems we create onto it we create uh, self designs which work for the uh, specific requirements of our customers in the specific environmental conditions so yes I mean innovation is the one which keeps you going right and in terms of commerce does uh, HL ever look at the commercial angle of whatever it is doing so far we, we look for the support of the customers who are, are uh, services, try services. Right. And also, as a company, we need to look at the commercials of it. Because as a CMD, I'm responsible to show uh, growth year on year. Right. And uh, yes, we, we look at the commercials, but not as a totally a private business oriented. You're not dictated by them, but it's definitely there. It because definitely it, there. It links to sustainability, sir, for any organization. Sure. I mean, we earn our salaries from uh, the commercial business. Right. I mean, uh, the numbers which we get onto it. Right. Yes. And I think uh, when we manage to match both and get a balance between the two, when the organization grows, I think everybody benefits. And that's the joy of, you know, not being independent, but being interdependent. Yes, right. that's good. So we're going to go in for a short break. When we come back, we would want to learn from you that when you run an organization, some challenges, some advantages you see in the future of how are we placed in the aviation industry, and also some personal learnings and uh, some messages for people who are watching us. But right yeah. now, we take a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Before we resume our conversation with Mr. Suvarna Raju, let's take a brief look at the history of the day. In 1940, basketball was televised for the first time. The game was Fordham University versus the University of Pittsburgh in Madison Square Garden. In 1954, the first color television sets 
using the NTSC standard were offered for sale to the general public. In 1991, the first Gulf War ended on this day. On the 28th of February 1963, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, the first President of India, passed away. In 1922, on this day, Egypt gained independence from Britain. Welcome back. We are in conversation with the CMD of HAL, Sri T. Suvarnaraju. Yes. So talking of uh, industry growth and prospects, how is India positioned in the aviation industry worldwide in terms of competence and technology? On the, the defense platforms, I think we are placed uh, equal to any other international player on uh, the field. Uh, with regard to the the civil aircrafts, I think, uh, we had to catch up onto this thing. So, is that a mandate, sir? Because uh, you know it requires a lot of investment, and then for aircraft building. So, for the civil sector, it is uh, HAL doesn't have a mandate to really go in there deeply. We did make the transport aircraft for the Indian Air Force on uh, Hawker Sidley HS seven four eight. We made in 1964 onwards. Okay. And also we manufacture uh, the Dornier uh, aircraft, which for the Indian Navy. And recently we've uh, made uh, a Dornier, which is civil certified for the regional connectivity. Okay. Uh, this this requires. Uh, Yes, as uh, rightly said, Vajji, then uh, it requires a huge investment onto it. And uh, still there is an opportunity with the growth in the civil sector. And Brand India regional aircraft may be becoming sooner uh, reality. Right. India in terms of uh, its geopolitical stationing and in terms of its neighborhood, its topography, what are some challenges for producing or innovating and designing for a country like India? We have very specific requirements like uh, we have to guard uh, the borders which are at uh, higher altitudes and a design of uh, an aircraft or a helicopter for those altitude and temperatures is, is a task when it's a challenge. And uh, the peculiarities which we have uh, the ranges from requirements up to 60 percent of the area which we need to look around is is at a high altitudes right. so yes it's a challenge for the designers right so in terms of the trial periods because a lot of these uh, all these uh, this equipment and these uh, vehicles uh, air vehicles or the helicopters need a lot of time so there's a trial then there's feedback and then and this whole thing takes a lot of time often we also sometimes worry that when by the time the product comes out needs have changed and is it outdated. So how does one shorten this time? Yes, after the design we manufacture the prototypes. The prototype has to pass through all the specifications. So it's time consuming. And they're very detailed trials. Very and, detailed you know. and then every aspect of the specifications has to pass through like uh, the hot uh, temperature, cold temperature, altitude, uh, speeds, uh, shape, size, all have to pass through the, the specifications which are written by onto it. One way of uh, reducing this uh, time period which is taking on to us by making more prototypes. Okay. So, HL uh, started uh, adopting or financing uh, to make more prototypes so that the experimentation flights could be done on number of uh, prototypes so that the time taken for proving this would reduce it. So, excellence is the hallmark of HL and excellence in every walk of life is something that we are really looking at across corpora corporations, across institutions. How do you promote excellence? The passion right. takes you to be excellent. So isn't there this worry, sir, because now we have what we call a chalta hai attitude. We are happy with substandard at different levels, saying how does it matter? And more and more, I think it's a more casual approach to so many things we do. And here, when we talk of excellence, there is no space for being casual. In aviation, I think uh, you can't be casual. Yes. So you've got to be making an excellent things and you have to believe excellence, par excellence is required uh, to prove a product and then give such confidence to the customer. Right. So, I mean, it, it, it's again, as I rightly said, it's the passion which keeps you going. Right. So what is it that makes you go through successive failures and yet come out with a success? Failures are the stepping stones. So 
don't treat that as a failure and uh, get uh, dejected or a rejected uh, feeling. But take that as an experience, move on from there, learn from there, and then success is yours. What does success mean, sir? Success is uh, the achievement, what you thought, and you achieve that. I mean, that, that's, that uh, I would put it in a kind of uh, enjoying and reaching to a, a stage where you really did that. What do awards and recognitions, what role do they play in success? They would definitely encourage you. They, they keep you going on to it. I mean, always recognition is required. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you can't be a robo in this thing, all right? You need a recognition and some pat on your back when you do a good job. And is there a system of reward and recognition at HAL? Oh yes, we do have that system of uh, reward and recognition in HAL, yes. Young people today, you, you've been hiring, meeting, recruiting, seeing more than three decades over there. Has there been a shift in what people want today, young people, youngsters coming in for a job want? Oh yes, there's, there's a lot of change. There's a lot of change in the attitude. Uh, the seriousness with which uh, the older generation used to attach themselves to a given job uh, is not uh, there in the current generation. That's what I'm uh, seeing it. Um, they're more exposed to the new technologies and then uh, the small world. So, yeah, they want to be very quicker, quick buck, um, finish the job and run away onto it. Yeah. So, organizations across the world also struggle with how to build a culture. So what really is the culture of an organization and how does it come about? Where does it come from? It's the people who are there uh, in the organization. Culture, once created, can't be changed that easily. So it gets built over a period of time. Mm -hmm. It's not that you cut a culture and copy it in, uh, in a particular uh, organization. And people no. have tried. People have brought in full teams of management to try and change the culture and they've not succeeded. It won't be successful. So it got to be inbuilt and then once it's a process which the industry grows up on toward. I mean, you don't have a proper culture, then of course it reflects on the performance and on the image of the company. So what inspires you? My job so far. Okay, what about your job? Yeah, that's what I said, my job which inspires me on toward. I, the passion towards the job which... Uh, right, so the creating or the science of it, the technology when a new product comes out, it's the technology and the way the issues would arise, finding a solution for the issues which are coming up, and that right. thrills me out better. So that means problem solving and finding, challenging. It's a challenge. Challenges. Lots of challenges, right. and that's what really motivates you. Okay. And what demotivates you? <laughs> Failure. Mm. So that's interesting. I think at one level, failure helps one learn. <laughs> and. Uh, so that's, it's nice to know, so that means when I'm demotivated, that's when I need to pick myself up and say, Move on. How do you relax? So you watch Hindi movies, you listen to songs. Listen to music. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes if, if a day or two more are there, then take a, start painting something and then okay. paint it up and then. So you do watercolors or oils? Oil colors and I do a craft work. Okay, with your hand. Yeah. So, you know, normally, so we think that, you know, scientists and people with science and technology have this one side of the brain orientation and they think numbers and they think, and here you're talking of something so beautifully, so innovative, so creative. This whole bit about the left brain and the right brain and having <laughs> subject in silos and all, it's a myth. Um, it would be very difficult for me to answer, Aunt Roy, but right. I mean, you grow up, uh, you find the best way for your relaxation. So when we talk of uh, engagement with uh, technology, engagement with processes, I think the biggest thing and somebody sitting at the pinnacle is also engagement with people. How do you make sure that when you're at the top of the pyramid, you're in touch with the lowermost rung and the maximum number of people? As uh, so many years of work in HL, I mean, I have a very strong relation to the the bottom of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. So we used to, I, I've learned the work from the technicians who are on the shop floor. Uh, and as we grew up and then I still keep the touch with them and then most of the people whom I worked along in the last 
few years. Uh, by name, I know them, and so that okay. gives a very strong bond. And uh, at times, we used to work beyond the work hours, even in Arjun's critical uh, requirements. We used to spend more than 20 hours on the shop floor, and uh, that's the kind of a uh, relation we have with the people who are. And uh, the youngsters, of course, you got to be in touch with them to correct them into a right way to get what is that we are uh, expecting to have a good result. So we keep talking of team building and uh, motivating people and teams are put together. But what really keeps a team strong and together? Team depends on the leader. I mean, it's the leader who keeps the uh, team together. Mm -hmm and make the environment so conducive for the team members to work together and get the targets which are put in front of them. And uh, what are some critical qualities of leadership? Because it's a huge subject. People have made crores trying to teach leadership. And uh, there are so many people who are, without being taught, some of the best, most innovative leaders. So what really is this term called leadership? Leader is the one who uh, knows his job knows his people and uh, knows what to achieve. Mm. So he need to bring in the togetherness of the people around him and uh, create an environment that uh, everyone would contribute to a right direction and to achieve the positive results. Wonderful. And I think just a sentence you're saying knows his job and knows people, that by itself is, is uh, very, very important and not very easy to do. Because you have to be one of the people to know the people. Know the people, yes. If you were not an aeronautical engineer, if you were not here, what would you be? I thought of going to IPS. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. With some of uh, then I was selected for the uh, Indian Navy in 1979. Mm -hmm. so okay. Otherwise, I don't know. I <laughs> maybe one of that. So you still have this connect with the uniform because you're making products for the uniform personnel. Oh, yes. So I think somewhere the uniform connection has been there. <laughs> right. Maybe. Right. So talking of uh, music and when we talk of art and when we talk of creativity, what is the role that stress plays in growth? Is it important people say you need to be a little stressed, you need to push yourself? People say, no, you should be calm and relaxed while working out tough mathematical equations. What's the role of stress? You don't get your results, you are stressed up. Mm -hmm. So so, uh, so how does one handle stress? Get more stressed? I don't know the internal reflexes of uh, the stress. When many times we go and then the proper relaxation and then some exercises which you mm -hmm. make you de-stress on to it. But it. I really haven't felt the difference. I mean, when you're stressed up or not stressed up, I, mean, I keep doing the job where uh, keep moving on to You've it. You've given a very beautiful, I think, solution to so many problems because half the time stress is created when we keep thinking of it and we take the baggage forward. And you're saying, I don't even think about it. I just move on. And when you move on, the baggage gets left behind. And I think that's <laughs> QED, <Could> <laughs> <laughs> quite easily done. What is your vision, sir, for HAL? HAL should be one-stop solution for all the aviation requirements in this country. And it should be a technology center. What is the support it requires for this? It's on its path to this achievement. And then we need to uh, create products and support it to the customers. And we also require the support of the customers uh, to be in that place. Any message you'd like to give out there in the world from some life learnings about how we see success, growth, passion and excellence. Don't look at results. Don't wait for them. Keep doing your job and what the goals will, you will pass the goals and you get your whatever you require. So single, I think, focus and not letting clutter come into the life. Concentrate on your work without looking uh, for results, immediate results, and then keep doing the job with a good uh, zeal and then it takes you all the way out. So when we talk of concentration, I think all of us, uh, we virtually sleep with the enemy. We have this little black box uh, slab called the telephone with us. <laughs> and uh, 
I think it makes us do everything except focus and concentrate because it's constantly pulling us into different directions. How does one focus then? How does one deal with this bane and the boon? <laughs> bane, bane in the sense it, it has its utility. Please use it to that extent. Don't use it for everything else. Okay. It's created for communication. So, so know when to stop. Yes. I think that's beautiful. Sometimes, and even the stock market say you should know when to exit, you should know when to stop. And I think that's a very important life learning. And that ensures that you're the master and not the slave of something that you created. Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for coming onto a program. It was wonderful. Sometimes uh, we can't speak volumes about excellence because excellence lies in the doing of it. And HAL has shown us that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, for Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed our program. Till next time, Namaskar.